What's up everybody? This is Jose from Southern Lights. On today's video, we're going to be driving through Suncoast Estates, aka the Slum Coast. One of the most notorious neighborhoods in Lee County, Florida. Today is a Monday, and we have projected a hurricane roughly about for the day of tomorrow or the next day. So this will be the last normal day before a hurricane. Now this community here recently suffered massively during Hurricane Ian. Uh, a lot of the mobile homes were destroyed. Uh, it's a neighborhood known for poverty, unfortunately, addiction, and a lot of social problems. And despite being the poorest region in Southwest Florida, they actually had significant hurricane damage now our camera is mounted outside of our vehicle and my microphone is inside this has to be one of the riskiest ways to record you're going to get a good audio and you're going to get great video footage but as a video creator the possibilities of me losing my equipment here are extensively high it wouldn't be difficult for that phone to go flying and thousands of dollars of equipment to be lost during this video i'm gonna drive a little slow <coughs> sometimes that irritates people but uh that's fine i'm not in a rush i want to give you guys a good look at this neighborhood um it's been roughly about a year since hurricane ian came through here and hurricane ian destroyed this community and the worst part about it is that this community was the last place that needed that to happen to them the poorest place in southwest florida i literally saw mobile homes here that were bulldozed to the ground by the winds of hurricane ian and in about a day or two another hurricane will be up on top of us and it could definitely unleash the same type of destruction once again on this community hopefully it doesn't come through here but i figured since it's been about a year since hurricane ian and we got another one on the road that it wouldn't hurt for us to simply uh, do this again i think i'm not even going that slow i'm probably going about the speed limit the problem is people like to go 10 15 20 miles above the speed limit and they get very irritated when you actually go the speed limit but uh, we want to drive as slow as possible to avoid losing our equipment so i'm going to take a right here just to ensure that the people behind me i just now got a car behind me. i don't go left actually so people behind me don't get irritated but yes this is in fact an area known for poverty and man it's like when a place is already poor and then on top of that they get hit with just a disaster it just makes it that much worse um, we're gonna pull into this gas station here and once we're on the residential street it'll be a lot easier for us to drive slow we gotta start off kind of in a there's a black mark on the phone I don't know if it's the phone or if there's a bug oh it's the mount okay okay so now we're at a gas station here it's the mount okay not the actual screen this is a risky way of recording, there's no doubt about that. We could easily use our equipment. <coughs> but it was a shame that just an impoverished community as this is, um, on top of all their poverty, got destroyed by that hurricane. Lots of families with kids here. This is one of the cheapest places in Southwest Florida. Um, but despite the affordable rents, trust me, you do not want to end up living here. Uh, this place is known as Methville. It's just a lot of poverty, a lot of people on the streets. Um, beautiful sunset today. And it's a beautiful evening. Motorcycle there. I'm a little stressed out from the hurricane situation. It makes my stomach hurt and I have a, like, stomach ulcers and stuff like that. And the stress of the hurricane just makes it that much worse. I've been struggling with my stomach the last day. Um, hurricanes are traumatic experiences that leave you after effects. And uh, it kind of stresses you out. Not good for stomach ulcers. I try to be cool, but, you know, the feelings you get and the 
memories of what we lived here in Lee County after the hurricane. We don't have to traumatize anybody. We, uh, you could have bought a mobile home here a while back for under a hundred thousand dollars. We, uh, decided not to. It's just not worth living in a place like this. These places are tough places to live. Everything gets stolen. Almost people everywhere. Lots of addicts. We're really quiet tonight. Sometimes the quiet before the storm is what they call it. This area has uh, very low incomes. <coughs> Something uh, embarrassingly low. And despite being between Fort Myers, Cape Coral, supposedly some of the fastest growing areas in the state and in the country, the, the growth hasn't reached this little area. <coughs> in fact, uh, the, the hurricane left even more people homeless and those who had homes, their homes were left in worse condition. And we could almost say things got worse for a lot of people, more than better. <coughs> Rather than improvement people have actually seen their conditions worse in here. It's still a little bit of glare on that camera. I saw a little bit of glare passing that truck, but it's impossible. At least it's somewhat better uh, video quality. Now the reason we're putting the phone outside is so you guys can get a better video. The windshield creates more glare. You can see it's a little bit of glare with the vehicle passing, but it's not too bad. If I had cleaned that phone lens better it could have been better than that but it's still a pretty crisp video it's a lot quieter than I thought it would be I thought it would be a, a loud evening back in here with this hurricane but I guess people are just selling down you know these people here uh, <coughs> have suffered greatly after Hurricane Ian economically it's the middle of the week people who sometimes people live paycheck to paycheck so imagine for somebody living paycheck to paycheck, a hurricane on a Monday isn't really ideal. You know, lots of homeless people I've talked to here are telling me they're not going to go to a shelter. They're going to sleep on the streets or quite simply in the woods. The hurricane changes direction. I will tell you, it will be horrendous. You can see a pile of clothes here. You get a lot of evictions in this neighborhood. Um... A lot of evictions. People get evicted. Um, put my blinkers on real quick. <coughs> Just go past. A lot of evictions. A lot of people end up uh, getting evicted. You know, not getting paid. Evictions. Very, uh, very bad. Could also be a trash shop from a home getting remodeled. But you also see a lot of evictions here. One new mobile home here on the right, and there's four new mobile homes here. I don't know if FEMA is finally going to start bringing in mobile homes for people who lost their homes. You can see the garbage is overflowing here. I'm not sure why, but uh, you know the garbage trucks aren't going to pick that up in this county. If it's not in the garbage can, they're not picking it up, from what I understand, unless it's like bulk. But there's four mobile homes in this lot, and it might be that FEMA's finally a year later. Or FEMA or something is doing something. Insurance companies. <coughs> it's almost impossible to insure an older mobile home. This is just a battle for people living in these communities. It's, it's um. They do own the land. It's not a mobile home park. Some people call it the largest mobile home park in the country. But they actually own the land here. So it's not exactly a mobile home park. They do own the land. There's a fire going on. I don't know if somebody's burning garbage or... Well, oh, they're burning garbage over here, which is technically illegal in this county. They're not supposed to do that, from what I understand. Well, they got the little fire pit going. 
I used to like bonfires. We did it in Alabama, but in Florida, there's different rules about lighting bonfires. You really, really shouldn't do that here in Florida. It's very quiet. I'm a lot quieter than I expected. I thought with this hurricane, it might be a madhouse out here. But it is truly a quiet, eerily quiet evening here. A lot of the homeless people in activity that was in this community has moved into other parts of North Fort Myers, which right now are popping off along US 41. So it's just possible that you know, they pushed out some of the bad element into other uh, commercial areas and away from the residential community so that people can live in peace. Uh, They've been through enough already to have a bunch of junkies in here. But Norfolk Myers has always been infamous for this type of activity, so it's not really a surprise that this community is uh, dealing with this type of problem. Other than that, it's a beautiful evening. We had a beautiful sunset. And Sun Coast Estates is just to the north of Fort Myers. Not really close to Hatchie River. This area didn't suffer from storm surge. It was the winds that really did damage here, which is kind of odd. Most of Southwest Florida had storm surge damage here. They had wind damage. And you can see another either demolition or... I think what happens with a lot of these mobile homes is that the people that live in these mobile homes work construction jobs, and then they'll, they'll pay the... Uh, <coughs> when the city garbage trucks come around, they'll give them 20 bucks to take that to the landfill. Um, and then they don't have to pay the landfill fees, which have become excessive in Lee County. Lee County used to have reasonable landfill fees a few years ago. And then they doubled it up. They doubled their landfill fees. About a year ago, this neighborhood here was a sad drive because a lot of these people own their mobile homes outright. You practically can't insure a mobile home that's this old in Florida. Most of these mobile homes are 60s, 70s, 80s. You just can't insure them. Look at here, this property, the grass is overgrown all the way out to the road. That's usually another really bad sign for a neighborhood. You can see the, e the easements here are overgrown. It hasn't been raining that much lately, so it's not like it's wet. You can see here, this person's been keeping it up, but Overgrown easements are usually a bad sign. You know, if you don't even care about mowing your lawn, not a lot of pride in your neighborhood when you don't take care of your property. So you can see here, a lot of these easements are not being mowed. Most of these aren't being mowed. That's that's a horrible thing. You know, you should have pride if you own a property. Most of these people own their properties. You should, you should um, have some type of pride, you know, in your neighborhood, your community. You know, I, I live in a neighborhood where people just didn't give a crap about their properties. I was one of the few people that did everything they could to keep their property up and orderly and clean with my neighbors. Simply didn't. They really didn't. I was one of the few neighbors in my neighborhood that was, in my, you know, known for always having an impeccable lawn. But my neighbors didn't care. You know. they, their properties were filthy, and me getting my property cleaned up encouraged a few other people to try to do the same. <coughs> but when you live in a crappy neighborhood, most people just, you know, don't care. You know, they pay off a trailer and. They get an inheritance or sue somebody, pay off a trailer. That's it. There's no more desire. And that's kind of why I'm glad I used to have a mobile home here in South Florida and I sold it. And I'm really glad I sold it because I feel like when I own a mobile home, you know, once you don't have to pay a mortgage and you don't have to make a lot of money, you just make enough money to live. And then you don't have any goals or any ambition. I think I spent the first 10 years of my youth uh, wasting away, really, my youth. What a crappy mailbox. Wasting away my youth, um, absolutely doing really nothing with your life. I think what happens to people in these communities is, well, trailers paid off, so why mow the lawn? 
you know, why try to move into a house? You already have a place, you know, like you just become uh, comfortable with your poverty and you never get ahead in your life. And I think in life you, you have to strive for more. I understand if you're already elderly, disabled, there's different circumstances. But I feel like as a young person, the worst thing you could do is trap yourself. Look at all these tires. Trap yourself in a place like this. Because, you know, the house is paid off, so why try, you know? It's a horrible, um, horrible outcome for a young person. <coughs> of course, I didn't see that. I thought it was slick when I had a trailer paid off. I thought I was the king of the world. I got my trailer paid off. I thought I was the king of the world when I had my trailer paid off, but... No, there's more you can do with yourself. Um, that's kind of a trap of poverty it's just you just get comfortable and if you're renting you got a nine hundred dollar rent eh, whatever you know you get trapped in poverty you get comfortable in poverty and i feel like once you're trapped there's a new house right there they made a huge house that is a big house now i if i could afford a house that big it wouldn't be in this neighborhood <laughs> I, I couldn't see myself spending Four hundred thousand dollars to build a house in a neighborhood like this. <coughs> I really couldn't. Can you imagine that? It's probably the only house in here. Well, one of the few. Really quiet. You can see people have been doing burnouts here. A while back, I was doing a video here. I think they were like needles at a bus stop. You know, people make these improvised little picnic tables for the bus stops with the kids. They had needles on it. What the crap? Lots of garbage out. I think of these mobile homes, they're just all falling apart, so they produce. That's the thing about mobile homes is they just produce more garbage than a house because they're quite really falling apart. I don't believe how much garbage a mobile home produces. Because there's so much rotting crap that falls apart. Walls that leak and destroy the drywall. And it's a never-ending uh, battle trying to keep a mobile home inhabitable. The aluminum can dream of America. It's the only aluminum can you can live inside of. No other country in the world. I think Canada and Mexico have more. Feet. Turn right. Oh, thank you, sir. Here's another pile of garbage. I think it's the same one or another one. Hmm. There's a refrigerator. You can sell that for scrap metal and a water heater. This is a scrapper's dream. I don't know what scrap metal is right now. We got a little Ford Ranger, take that down the Garden Street, put it on scale and see how much cra I mean, cash they'll give you for it. More garbage. Turn right onto Tish Lane, then turn left onto McDaniel <coughs> No for rent signs. We're recently in Tampa. And we ran into a lot of for sale signs in Tampa. Uh, for rent and for sale. Turn left onto McDaniel Drive. Got some bicycles or tricycles. Turn left onto McDaniel Drive. It's okay, sir. I want to see these tricycles pass by. Bicycles or tricycles? Bicycles. Head west on Jish Lane toward Everhart Drive. Eerily quiet. Turn left onto Mark's Drive. I've never seen this place so quiet, to be honest with you. Turn left onto Mark's Drive. We do call it the quiet before the storm. <sighs> the no foe my. Take Mark's Drive for half a mile. The no foe my. The no foe my. The no foe my. The no foe, the no foe, the no foe, my. 
Where they burn tampons in a fire pit. You know, for my, where the trailers explode. Because backyard chemistry had a heavy load. Where is it at? The no foe mine. Where is it at? It's another bicycle with no lights. One of them has lights, the other one doesn't. Where is it at? The no foe mine. There's no lie you can buy for 25. You no foe mine. Oh, oh, oh. 1,000 feet, turn left onto Laurel Lane. Laurel Lane, what a beautiful name. Laurel. Laurel Lane. Laurel Lane, take me home to the place. Crackheads roam. Some turn left onto Laurel Lane, then city, turn left onto the city, city, Drive. city, don't interrupt me. City, do not interrupt me. The no foe my. Que lo que hay in the no foe my. Que lo que hay. And the no for my this car behind me is coming fast. He looks like he's gonna run me off the road, but why the rush? Why the rush? Oh, he's coming in here too. Okay. In the corner store right here. And the no for my. Dime que lo que hay. And the no for my. I'm gonna turn right around. I know this person's gonna frown. When they see me turn around in the no foe mind, in the no foe mind, turn around in the no foe mind, in the gas station, and there's a bunch of cats, some cats like 10 cats on there, like 20 cats on there, in the no foe mind, okay, I almost ran over somebody in a bicycle. In the no for my eye, uh, uh. in the no for my eye, uh, uh. people ride up by, uh, uh. in the no for my eye, uh, uh. in the no for my eye, uh, uh. people ride up by, uh, uh. Oh, oh. I'm gonna let these cars pass real quick so we can get to the circle, okay? In the no for my eye, uh, uh. People ride a bike in the no for my eye. People ride a bike in the no for my eye. People ride a bike and for 25. Turn left onto the Daniel Drive, then turn right. I gotta work on that song. And the no for my people ride a bike. Is that a squatted Ukraine? We'll catch them at the gas station later. And the no for my people ride a bike with no lights, and they don't realize. That I can't see you with my headlights And the kids go to school with headlights And I know for my People got headlights And I know for my People ride a bike With no headlights in the no for my eye, I see something interesting with my eye. In the no for my eye, people ride a bike with no headlight. And tell me why, when the kids go to school, they get headlights. In the no for my eye. Don't you realize? Oh, that's the time away. In the no fault of mine. People got here now.